How are we, YouTubers? Mary's on the phone. As you can probably tell, I'm probably moving around, but I'm not really moving. All right, Oscar! Fuck! Well, are you going to film? Why can't you film? See, you, 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 the reaction. It's all about reaction on this. It's the JB and Mary sideshow. Right, so for everyone in Australia, right, you would have all heard of Father Bob, right? Okay, who cares? <coughs> yes, the bird, there goes the bird. Right. Grab, grab cocky. No, no. Bob, come on. <laughs> Baby. Just have a listen to this. Yeah, we all know he passed away what a bit over 12 months ago, right? He was the larrikin priest with the biggest heart. Father Bob Maguire lived by the motto, leave no one behind. But the Bob squad is in danger of being disbanded and his legacy is under threat. Save the Father Bob Foundation. Save the Father Bob Foundation. Please help us. For decades, Father Bob was someone to lean on for those in hardship. The larrikin priest with the popular knack for telling it how it is. Do you reckon times are getting a bit tougher? Yeah, of course they're tougher, tougher and tougher. The elites don't give a rat's ass. Lean on me. Do you hear what he said when he was holding his hand? He said the elites couldn't give a rat's ass. His passing, the Father Bob Maguire Foundation forges on with food relief for those in need like grandmother Bridget Anderson. Bridget, could you survive without the Father Bob Foundation? No, not at all. Not at all. We couldn't get through the week for eating healthy food because they give you healthy food here um, without the Father Bob's Foundation. At Bob's Pantry in Melbourne, vegetables and snacks are packed into parcels of compassion by volunteers like Clary, who hangs out here every Monday, inspired by Bob's example of service. Deb, I love it. It's my favourite day of my whole week, and I just feel like it's a privilege. It's a privilege to serve the people our community at the moment, but they're doing it pretty tough. Bob never stopped fighting for the underprivileged, and you could almost hear his familiar voice echoing through the pantry. We won't turn anybody back. Hang on! Help is on its way. <laughs> Daniel Prowse was a mate of Father Bob's and is now a director of the foundation. I loved him. We always had the most humorous conversations um, and I was always in stitches laughing with some of the things that he would come out and say because it would just be so wild. Danielle's a proud member of the Bob Squad, the team that continues to provide help where it's needed thanks to a fleet of Bob's Hope Mobiles. The people that are coming for um, our services has absolutely tripled in size. We're seeing an increased amount of people that have lost their jobs, um, the cost of electricity, the cost of their rents increased, they can't afford to buy food, they can't afford to make themselves meals, so they're coming to us to give them that extra support. Danielle still pitches in herself as a volunteer, filling bags from the fridge before revealing a cold hard truth about the organisation. The Father Bob Maguire Foundation is facing a financial crisis of its own. Could the Father Bob Foundation close? 100%. We are at risk of closing because we, are, we just have lost that support um, and we are in desperate need of donations and we're running out of food, we are running out of money and we really, really, really need that support by all, not just Melbourne but all of Australia as well to get on board because we want to preserve his legacy and we want his work to continue. Now it's Bob's pantry that needs filling and while his team refuses to veer from his vision, they're hoping Bob's example of generosity might encourage others to chip in. So this is serious. We can't have the Father Bob Foundation close. What kind of support are you looking for? We absolutely need monetary support and it's end of financial year so everything is a tax deduction over two dollars and as Father Bob always said no one gets left behind and we want to continue that we do not want people to be left behind. So the foundation that fights for the needy is now in need itself. We're told that without significant support the Father Bob Maguire Foundation could close within the next three to six months. It's a shock for those who rely on the service. Bridget, the Father Bob Foundation, we're here today 
is in trouble, if it were to disappear, how would you feel about that? I'd be devastated. He was a big hearted man, wasn't he? He was. And now we need to say a prayer to keep this foundation alive. We do, we do. But with his memory still strong, those committed to the cause are hoping they can carry on. Please, please just give whatever you can and it will be given out with love and it will be accepted by those who really, really are doing it tough. And see the mission through. We're not going to survive if we don't look after one another. Don't forget me, Bobber. What have I said? What have I always maintained in my videos? And I'll have to say it again, won't I? And I will say it again. I will continuously always say this. Stop giving a fuck about yourself and give a fuck about others because it works in a circle, okay? If you give only a fuck about yourself, you're not helping anyone, which means you're not able to receive help from anyone because you're not helping anyone. You've taken from them and what happens when everything around you runs out? Right? You're fucked. So give a fuck about others. And while we're on it, because Father Bob is a bit dry witted and he was a priest and everything and he said, you know, as you heard him, he said, the bloody elites, and this is a priest, in his own words, a priest, mind you, the bloody elites couldn't give a stuff, a rat's ass, a rat's ass about them. So when I say this, I want everyone who's ever taken anything I say out of context, let me bring it right back into context. Fucking listen to me videos. Grow the fuck up. All right? I did not start my fucking channel. Okay? To talk shit about anyone, to make people feel like shit, or anything like that. If one video I put up where people spoke shit about me in amongst a certain fucking group, right, and it got back to me, right, saying that I'm no good, yeah, and I didn't mention names. That's another thing I'll say. I don't mention names. So if you understand what I'm talking about, or you know what I'm talking about, unless I say your fucking name, all right, it, there's a lesson there for other people going through what I'm, I'll be going through. I started this channel to help people. So for all you fucking people out there, right, who in a way have gotten to know me and you've tried to strike me down or you don't call me anymore, nothing like that, right, for whatever reason, okay, let me say this. My videos are still the same, okay? Right? I keep in contact with people. Tom, who I went and visited in the car, he's now got a girlfriend. He just reached out to me. It'd be good to see you, JB. He said, because I'll never forget that day you came to the car park and brought Maccas and saw me. Jamie from Shepparton. Andrew from Horsham, when I went up there after his son passed away. Jamie had a problem. Now Jamie's got a great job with Ash, and they're going well. And I keep in contact with them. Right? Right? There's, there's Scrote, right? From Ararat. Right? Who tells me all the time, JB, your, blood's worth, your blood should be bottled. You know, they should be bottled, bottled in your blood. You're of the earth. That's what people say. What I think of myself, and I'm going to be quite honest here right now, and that I don't know if I'm a nice person or a bad person. I just don't know. I've done a lot of bad things in my life. All right? A lot of bad things, right? Um, am I proud of them? I wish I'd never had to do them. But they're obviously things that needed to be done. And I can say that on the basis of this. I've never fucking put my hands on an innocent person. I've never put my hands on anyone who didn't deserve to have my hand put on them, right, with force. Okay? I was out to lunch with someone the other day. We won't mention names, we'll just say Geelong. Right? Okay? Okay? And um, they were dribbling on about stuff. And while we're there, this old lady and old man came into the cafe, right? Okay? And she was in a wheelchair. And he's pushing through the chairs. He, she's not, he's not going to expect her to get up out of her chair, right, 
and then hop into another chair. So I simply did this with the person I was with. I stopped the conversation and I got up and I removed the chair where the, the, the old man was wheeling his wife so she could get into the table in her chair. And I said, there you go. And he said, thank you. And, that, and I said, no, that's all right, no worries. And that I was the only one in the cafe who thought about doing it and I was the only one who did it. Do I, did I do it for a medal? No. And she thanked me as well. And I said, it's nice to be nice. And that, but they don't need to be nice. You just be nice to those people, those elderly people. Right? They gave, they gave their heart and soul to this country or to the in, in part of the way in this world somewhere. Right? Given their ages, they're in their in their 80s, right? They have definitely contributed to my upbringing in some way. They've had an impact. Right? Okay? And this to be happening? This really? Well, we're all worrying about fucking Instagram and who's maybe how many likes we've got here and everything else like that. But what about that? And as for your fucking mental health, you know, push-ups and fucking bike rides and fucking everything else. How much fucking money do they fucking get? What about organisations like this? This is where the real mental health is. This is where the real mental health is. I had someone also tell me about mental health. You know, Justin, how come you're not going to see a psychologist? I've, I've actually been and seen three psychologists and three, four, two psychiatrists, right? The main factor is, is I can't afford it. But all this money that's going in to mental health, why isn't there an outreach that's free? Okay? What about this? We've got the companies in Australia, right? Okay? To sponsor these companies, right? And it all comes down to this. Simple thing. As he said, I'll be there for you, copper. Stop caring so much about yourself and reach out a bit. Get off the fucking couch. Don't take what someone says out of content when their actions don't speak it, because you've tried to make their content that, and it's not, because their actions don't speak it. Why do people want to risk, why do people want to just bury people, shame people, stay, put a stain on people? It's like, what's his name, who just pushed the reporter over? What's his name? Um, Costello. Costello. He pushes a reporter over. He didn't push a reporter over. The reporter's in his face with a fucking phone. But let me just put that. I was going to put that into another clip, but I'll do it right now saying I'm on a roll, right? I know. Let me just say you. Tell me. Back in my day, and Stuart Tipping can relate to this, and so could David, right? Trucky David, how are you, mate? Good to see you. Your garage is gone. I've got your photo. Sorry. I've been a bit down. In case no one's realised, I've been a little bit down after me mate died on a motorbike, okay? And then other things that happened prior to his death, standing out the front of a fucking police station, right? And other things that happened, okay? I've had a bit going on. I'm not having a go at you, Trucky David. I'm just saying out there. I've been a bit down, right? You want to know how many people have reached out to me? Not many. Not the ones that I thought anyway. Not the ones that I thought, all right? So yeah, I changed. I immediately changed. But you, Trucky David, reached out. Stuart, Andrew, Scrope, David and Helen, and, and, and Tom, right, and a couple of others, Kevin from Geelong, who's in a wheelchair, he's struggling, right, all of you, you have, right, but the ones I thought weren't, right, but what I'm going to say about that, with what happened with Costello, is this, right, back in my day, okay, if someone actually got up and said, he assaulted me, he, you assaulted me, you pushed me, you know what, you weren't fucking hit hard enough. And I'd lose my job. Because in career control, right, or bouncing back then, it was fucking, you got the job on the basis of how fucking hard you get hit. Right? Fucking, for, if you can get up and actually say those words, you weren't hit fucking hard enough. Right? Let's give a fuck about people. Right? Fuck your fucking, your, your, your shit that's going on, or your fucking own shit. Get up, mate. I could only imagine... If we had an infantry war now, how would this war go around the world? What infantry would we fucking have? Believe me, it wouldn't be like yesteryears. It wouldn't be like the people I know when I was fighting and stuff like that and doing things. Right? Those people aren't around. They're, they're scarce of them. If they were to change the age limit now 
on an infantry wall, you know what the age limit would have to be to get the decent soldiers in there? 50 plus. 50 plus. Because everyone under the age of 50, you fucking would all run, fucking run helter-skelter. Right? It's the Gen Xs that get out there. If you want to bring the fucking pronouns in, whatever it is, like that. Right? So, give a fuck. Because a foundation like that, I have helped Father Boy. I've met him in my past. Right? And I'm sure many of you have too. That's a good cause. That's a good cause. Putting someone on a couch. Oh, how are you feeling? Do you feel like killing yourself? Oh, not today, but maybe tomorrow. Oh, here, have a Xanax. Right? That's pathetic. There's your mental health. When people can't eat and they're sitting in a cold place, and Mary's irritating, she's getting moody because she's moving around, she can't sit still, Mary. Right? She's got a bottom that went from this big. Right? Shut up, idiot. That now. Really? Yeah, and Stuart and Dave, you probably understand what, we're, what I mean by that. What, um, that was the free entry measurement. If your bum fits in there, sweetheart, you can get in. <laughs> All right? Go get a pie. Help Father Bob. Don't let this foundation down. And stop giving a fuck about yourself. All right? Okay? Go get a pie.